talk about Jesse James and uh, I'm gonna let Dan talk about what he thinks is interesting about Jesse James or things that uh, maybe your pet peeves about what other people believe or things that stand out in your mind what do you think is important for people to know about Jesse James I think the most important thing is is that he wasn't exactly not even close to what the academic world has turned him into and it's largely because of the misunderstanding of what the Civil War was all about right. and what was actually going on. So it's kind of like the narrative was uh, controlled by those who won the war basically yeah. in, in a sense. <clears throat> yeah, the victor writes the history. Um, you know, the people are all in an uproar right now and you know, you hear it all all over the internet, you know, we're losing our rights, they're taking our rights, they're, you know, you can't lose your rights. No one can take your rights. The only way you can lose them is if you voluntarily give them up. Right. Okay? Yeah. Now, in the Civil War, all that was, it, it, it's the same thing they're trying to do today, conquer and divide. They create create a conflict between two groups of people, in this particular case, the North and the South. They lead everybody to believe that it's all about slavery, and it survived clear up until today, 150 years later. Everybody still thinks the Civil War was all about freeing the slaves. <coughs> in reality, it wasn't even an issue. In fact, it was more of an issue of creating slavery. And what I mean by that is not, you know, ball and chain on the ankle and whips and forced labor. I'm talking about bondage and captivity. Mm -hmm. And this is what with the a, South was trying to prevent. With a, a system that controls its citizens, basically. Yeah. First, <clears throat> first you create the division. You get the conflict going. You constantly keep a watch the birdie thing going. Okay. I personally think that's what the slavery issue was, is watch the birdie. Mm -hmm. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, what I see was actually going on is you have a people who were pretty pissed off because we kicked them out of here in 1776. World bankers, right. royal families, the elite. <coughs> They tried again in 1818, let's see, 1812, and apparently the people weren't asleep enough. And then in 1862, the people were sufficiently asleep to pull it off, and they were successful. The objective was to take control of our fiat system, or set the stage to be able to do that. Um, it is the reason why President Lincoln was assassinated because, quite frankly, he would have been one of the best witnesses against him. Mm -hmm. um, we know that uh, Booth, what was his first name? Um, Frank, no, Frank. Uh, Who cares? <laughs> yeah, he'll come here. We'll, we'll think of it all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we know that Booth killed him, but if you go do a little bit of research on the internet that you think would be sufficient, you come to the conclusion, or they, the people who provide this information, they come to the conclusion that Booth was working for the KGC, or that he was representing the South. Those who were in control of the southern armies and the secret operations and so forth, they didn't want Lincoln dead. Yeah. They didn't want him dead at all. In fact, they were just as shocked as anyone else when he ended up being shot. Mm -hmm. um, Booth was too much of a loose cannon in order to bring him into the KGC. I prefer to call it the Confederate Underground. Mm -hmm. KGC just sounds a little too James Bondish for me. <laughs> um, well, the issue mostly was states' rights versus 
the federal government in having the most control. Well, see, that's another part thing. Of it. Everybody mm -hmm. looks at that word federal like it's some Americanized word. Right. And if you want to really know the truth, take that word federal and replace it with foreign. Yeah. And there you've got it. They don't belong here. Well, one of the biggest problems we have in our government today is that the quote unquote federal government controls so much of it <coughs> that we've become top heavy with government and regulation and we've lost our rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to these globalists. Well, once again, and not to dig at you, but once again, we didn't lose them. We well, voluntarily gave them up. <laughs> we, we've been without them for so long that nobody's protesting against them. Right. They, well, it's... Uh, we don't even old, realize that they're gone. Really. What's the old adage about boiling the frog right. in the frying pan? You put him in hot water and you just Jumps out. keep mm -hmm. turning up the, the heat a little bit at a time. And he'll sit there until he boils to death yeah. if you just do it a little bit at a time. Right. And anyway, back to Jesse James. I, I don't quite know how to describe him, but Jesse James was not some careless cowboy, rootin' tootin' cowboy, going around shooting up anybody that might have some cash on him. Um, some people call him uh, uh, the Robin Hood of the Civil War, and that doesn't even come close. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, he helped a lot of people out. Um, there's a lot of stories out there about uh, Jesse James gang uh, robbed a stagecoach. Well, if they did, it was probably Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. But their only targets were the banks. Banks and the railroads that were owned by the elite who were attached to those over in England. Mm -hmm. um, if you went and did a little bit of research on Salmon Chase and... Uh, his buddy, and I can't think of his name off the top of my head, it, you'll find a conspiracy right there sufficient to warrant shooting Abraham. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what about the cash sites that they left all over and these mystery glyphs and things around some parts of the United States? Do you think those are Jesse James related or...? <coughs> Well, 20 years ago, somebody told me that those were KGC-related or Confederate underground. Mm -hmm. I'd have probably laughed my head off. Right. Um, but there's too many things that points to the mystery glyph as being of KGC origin. Right. And one of the smaller things is the fact that uh, two of his primary operatives were Sioux Indians. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's never been a secret, his ability to understand the Native American languages and, and in addition to their sign language and their hieroglyph system. So, so you think that where these glyphs are found, there's a, a, a sub, or a, uh, sub, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, substantial, substantial cash. cash nearby associated with <coughs> one of those. Not necessarily but highly likely. I mean, we don't know how many of those were recovered. We don't know how many somebody has stumbled across and recovered. Um, the chances or the likelihood is not very high because you're going to hear about it mm -hmm. in one way or the other, okay? People just don't know how to keep their mouth shut. Seems like in one of the books, maybe the black book that they talk about there was a cash that one of his relatives went after and he ended up getting blown up or something in a booby trap. Well, it wasn't his relative, but it was a KGC operative, I believe, that shared the information with his grandson. Okay. Um, he warned his grandson, told him to leave it alone, but he decided he was going to go and try and retrieve it, and from what I gather, he blew himself to kingdom come. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to go look up uh, any newspaper clippings, uh, just just to validate it. You know, was that in the black book? Is that 
record or account or I think it was okay. and it, it's just one of the things I haven't got to to try to prove or disprove mm -hmm. and it's going to take it's going to take a lot of time <laughs> now we were talking about some interesting things this morning <coughs> and you showed me a bunch of photographs of uh, later in life the, the photographs that came out from that birthday party and some of the other things that the Hereford photo. The Hereford photo. Yeah. Talk about that because I mean I, I could see what you're talking about and it looked like Jesse James and every individual in those photos was also in that photo from his family earlier in history. Yeah. Um, the way that I stumbled across that is you know I was a little anxious to see photographs of people such as Captain Harrison Trow, because in the Black Book it talks about how uh, when Jesse staged his own death and shot uh, Charlie Bigelow, that he returned to the scene uh, dressed as Harrison Trow, Captain Harrison Trow, sent by, uh, can't think of his name, Governor Crittenden, and you know, and I, I always wondered how, how is it that he showed up on the scene, the crime scene, 30 minutes after it happened, and he was sent by Governor Crittenden. <laughs> Governor Crittenden lived 250 miles away, and last time I checked, we didn't have telephones in those days. Yeah, had the telegraph, but that was it. Still, and it would have taken two or three days to get a dispatch back. Yeah, I mean, it just. It's not only unlikely; it's it's near impossible. Um, I just don't see it happening. <coughs> but there's always, you know, there can always be some circumstance, something that you, you don't see uh, that could make it possible. But it's all the other corroborating evidence that has been discovered as I've gone through this book, doing an assessment. Uh, trying to make a determination whether it's actually, if the book is factual or if it's uh, uh, fantasy or if it's a little of both. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how many of the actual claims that I dove into and, and tried to prove or disprove, but so far I haven't been able to disprove anything. And there's some major key factors that settles it in my mind that for the most part that book's factual. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, after reading the part about Harrison Tro and digging into it, at the time I, I just couldn't find any photos of Harrison Tro. And uh, I remember putting the question out there a few times, whether on uh, Facebook or in an interview, I don't know. And uh, one individual contacted me and said that they had visited a uh, museum down in Her Hereford, Texas. I gotta start saying that right, Hereford. Yeah, like the cow, Hereford cow. Well, I've always said Hereford. Yeah. <laughs> and I grew up on a farm. <coughs> but uh, he said that he had been to the museum down there and there was a picture of Captain Harrison Trove and his wife hanging on the wall. And so I eventually got in touch with uh, one of the people that worked there, a young lady. Um, I don't remember what happened, but after about six months, it pretty much fizzled out and never got anything. And I don't know how much more time went by, but eventually I contacted, I think the same person, might have been someone new, and they said that they'd take the time and go around the museum and see if they could find the photo. And next thing you know, I get two beautiful photos in my email, uh, apparently taken in 1920 from the same event, which looked to me from the photos to be some kind of a birthday celebration. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, there was Jesse James, Captain Harrison Trove, and but the thing that would have convinced me or turned me away from it would be his wife. I knew it had to be Myra Bell. And please understand, 
Bell Star is not the same person as Myra Bell. They are two entirely different people. Jesse James was never married or really had anything to do with Bell Star. Okay? <laughs> um, I'll tell you some other time how that all came about. <coughs> well, down at the bottom of the photo it had the people's names, or at least the names they were using at the time, and it said Mrs. Tro. And I looked at the photo and immediately I knew that it was Myra Bell. Sure, she was, you know, probably clipping around uh, 60 some odd years old, but it was Myra Bell. And, you know, and I know what it's like. You got people coming up with tin types left and right. Like, oh, you know, this is Jesse James or this is Billy the Kid. And any halfwit can look at those pictures and say, where the hell do you come up with that? And you know what? I might be just like them. But I put the photos out there for comparisons and, and let the people make up their own mind, you know? But I'm I'm convinced that that's exactly who it is. Well, weren't there other individuals that were tied yes. to Jesse James in that photo as well? The more I started looking at them photos, I noticed another uh, elderly lady, and she's probably in her late 80s. And I looked at it, and my hell, that's Jesse's mother. And I thought, well, who's this guy that she's got her hand on his back? Obviously, she's with him in the photo. Well, I'd never even attempted to look up Jesse James's father. <coughs> and if you go do a uh, go do an internet search, you know, you're you're going to get what everybody else believes. You get the orthodox belief, and that's. Uh, uh, Robert, Robert Samuels, anyway, surely Robert Sam, or no, 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 that's my rebel. Oh hell, I can't think of his name, but anyway, that was not Jesse's dad, okay, because that guy was married to Zerelda. Zerelda was not Jesse's mother. <laughs> Zerelda Mims, no, Zerelda Cole James, that's not Jesse's mother, it's his aunt, and if you read the black book, you'll find out why it's his aunt, and why she ended up going down in history as his mother, anyway, so I do a little bit more research, uh, I believe there is a statement made within the black book that led me to who I'm positive was Jesse's father, and that is uh, Robert Southers James, the very man who fired the first shot in the Civil War. And of course history's got him dying off sometime in the, I think, the 60s. <laughs> I'm here to tell you he didn't die, because that's him in that photo. Looks like it looks very similar. Another photo popped up uh, from I can only assume the tin typers and and you know of course they want it to be Jesse James and Frank James. I mean you could find any old tin type of two boys standing there and they're everybody thinks it's Jesse and Frank. And uh, this photo was right along the same lines. And I looked at it and I said, uh, that's not Jesse James, but the kid on the left, though, looks an awful lot like the host in the home where they took the photo shoot in 1920, Captain Harrison Tro on this birthday party, mm. Epineus Bushrod Black. Mm. Uh, the kid looks just like him. The more I got to looking at the other kid, see, I thought, I thought the two boys and the two girls in the photos were couples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the more I looked at them, and I'm looking at the other people in the, Her the Herford photos, thinking, those are Jesse's kids. Hmm. You know, all grown up now, but in the Herford photos. And I'm pretty sure all four of them's in that photo. Hmm. It's just, you, you got to see it. I don't, I don't expect anybody to believe it, okay? Because I'm sitting here listening to myself, and 
I sound like the very people who contact me and send photos to me and say, what do you think, is this Jesse James? And if I tell them no, they get all pissed off <laughs> and tell you how wrong you are. And I'm, don't contact me then. Yeah. You know, if you can't handle the answer, I'm going to give you. I'm no more an expert at identifying photographs than the so-called people who are supposedly experts. How do you how are how do you become an expert at identifying photos? Yeah, just by analyzing them over and over. Is there again. a course you go through? <laughs> a degree? You know, no, the I, way I see it, you've either got it or you don't. Yeah. And I look at every little detail, every curvature of the face, every the shape of the chin, the, the part in the hair. Keep in mind, photos can be reversed, but right. <coughs> there's lots of little things you can look for. And you have to understand that noses don't stay the same, ears don't stay right. the same. Now, um, maybe changing the subject a little, but what is it about Jesse James that uh, that you think that people are so interested in? Is it the mystery of his death? Is it his life? Or I think it's a little bit of everything. I think it's the, the, the fantasy of it, whether it's true or not. Right. Um, the romance in it. Just every little thing that people have created and those things that may or may not be true about him. It's, it's like, uh, why, do we watch, uh, why do we watch James Bond? Yeah. <laughs> he's an interesting character. Yeah. We know he's not real, and we know there's probably no one individual out there that can do everything he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know. I, I, I find it interesting how even after Jesse disappeared, all the people that had been in his life before that all seemed to have money for the rest of their life. Well, yeah. <laughs> which, 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 in if he was an outlaw and if he had died, it looks like a lot of those resources would have drained, drained or dried up. You would think so. <laughs> but if you go look up uh, William A. Clark, uh, whoever took all the photos, they weren't shy about doing it. There's tons and tons of pictures of William A. Clark. Mm -hmm. And there's talk in the book is William A. Clark was actually Jesse James and he actually became a senator in Montana. And I don't doubt one bit of it. But it's not because I read the story and thought, oh wow, I think that's true. No, I have